Does it seem like ChatGPT is getting dumber? Does it blow you off? Give you superficial answers or even lie to you? You may be doing something that's seriously downgrading ChatGPT's performance and not even know it. I did for over a year. I was getting vastly inconsistent results from ChatGPT. One day it was as if ChatGPT was reading my mind. The next day it was like we were total strangers. ChatGPT has a fatal flaw. Even now, as of late September 2024, it's still not fixed. And this causes ChatGP to become stupid. That's the only way I can say it. After more than a year of suffering, I think I finally found out what the problem is and also the solution. I'm going to show you what to do so that you never encounter this issue. Hello world, I'm David Scott Bernstein. A few weeks after ChatGPT was announced, I became addicted. Honestly, I knew instantly that this was my calling. Like when I saw my first microcomputer in the mid 1970s, or when I saw the internet for the first time in the 1990s, I started to have conversations with ChatGPT, trying to push its creativity and reasoning capabilities. One of the things that people think are a big problem with AI is their hallucinations. You know, we do it too. Ask yourself any unanswerable question or a question that can't be answered. You can visualize the answer. If I say to you, I'm going to toss a coin and the result is going to be heads or tails, you can visualize either answer. This is kind of fundamental to how we think and process information. Hallucinations help the AI to make conceptual leaps. It's actually a good thing. Now, we do it, but we can guard against doing it unrealistically. And we have to help the AI in that regard. Unleashing the creative side of large language models can involve some hallucination. The kind of results that I get comes from giving it leeway to be creative and guiding it. It's like guiding a colleague in a conversation. So when I'm talking about the fatal flaw of ChatGPT, I am not talking about hallucinations. Having AI hallucinate is a good thing in moderation. I'm saying that every time I enable this one feature in ChatGPT, it becomes stupid. I'm a subscriber, and this has been true for all of the advanced models from OpenAI, including ChatGPT 4.0. Every time I ask ChatGPT to reference an uploaded file, it becomes dumb. This is especially true when I upload PDF files or other non-markdown files. Perhaps the intention is to use the code interpreter to write a parser, but I don't think many people would think of doing that. I've seen others talk about ChatGPT's difficulties reading large files as well. I'm not the only one. And it's not just difficulty reading files. Whenever this is encountered, ChatGPT becomes dumber. Maybe it has to try to conceal the fact that it's not able to do it, and that confuses it. It won't tell you that it's having trouble reading a file, but it can't answer questions about the material. This has been a serious problem for me. Many of my use cases involve processing lots of PDF files, and I can't get ChatGPT to really do it. I've been so frustrated and lost literally hundreds of hours in the process of discovering this. But I found a workaround. This is the one trick that has allowed me to co-author a book with ChatGPT. It actually is decent. It's not literature, but I think it's very concise and engaging and also insightful. These are things that ChatGPT has taught to me. And <laughs> if you know how to prompt it, you can get it to teach you them as well. That's the process of learning how to prompt well. For this project, the project of writing the book, I needed ChatGPT's input and I needed it to process very large amounts of information. I lost hundreds of hours with horrible results. It was only when I made this one change that I started to get the results that I could publish. Likewise, all of my conversations became more insightful when I did this one thing. So what is it? <laughs> it's simple. Instead of uploading information into PDF files, I simply paste information, you know, a couple pages at a time, into the chat window. This one thing made all the difference. As far as I can tell, 
custom instructions, which everyone should be using to get the most out of ChatGPT, regardless of whether you're on the free plan or the paid plan, works fine. Uploading files to the permanent area of ChatGPT seems to work better than uploading a file during a session, as long as you've referenced the file in your custom instructions. If you say something like, generate all of your output in my voice using the style guide I uploaded to your file area, then ChatGPT can use it. I find that when I don't reference files that I upload in my custom instructions, that ChatGPT doesn't notice them. Also, ChatGPT loves hierarchical information, and I mean really loves it. So Markdown, which is a file format that's basically text with some head, heading, headings and subheadings uh, is something that ChatGPT loves to work with. Uh, I get lots of great success with Markdown. So use Markdown, it works well. But in my experience, ChatGPT has a hard time parsing files. To me, this is like having a Ferrari that's unable to go beyond first gear. I'm pretty shocked that this obvious bug has persisted for so long. Even ChatGPT seems to be aware of it. Often, when I ask it to read a file in PDF format, it writes code to do that rather than actually consulting a library of routines to handle it. The problem is that reading a PDF file is pretty complicated and requires more than a simple program. And if you think that a bug of this magnitude surely would have been fixed by now, then I encourage you to look around. <laughs> we swim in a sea of bugs and poorly implemented software. We're just used to it. We've become numb to it, so we don't really notice it anymore. So how do you give ChatGPT the information that you want it to reference and use without uploading files? You paste it in the chat window. Well, doesn't that fill up the memory quota? Yes, but with ChatGPT 4.0, that memory quota is about 8,000 words which is enough for a typical book chapter, and much better than the 500 word limit that was in the previous versions of ChatGPT. What I'll do is I'll include a page of background in my prompts. My prompts tend to be pretty long, a page or more of information, to get ChatGPT in the right frame to be able to answer my question or provide the text that I'm looking for. Often I'll include pages of background material in my prompts, and because they're so long, and memory is limited for both input and output, I'll ask ChatGP to simply acknowledge the prompt that I give it, read it and say, okay. And then in the next prompt, I'll ask it to generate a response. So it has the full 8,000 word limit to be able to respond to me. I bet you've learned a thing or two from this video. And if you did, please smash the like button encourage me. It will encourage me to make more videos. Okay, in retrospect, I guess all of this is obvious. I mean, ChatGPT often writes the code in Python to actually parse the PDF file and then displays it to me. So I should have been aware that that simple 20 line little routine that it wrote is not enough to, to really parse through complex PDF files. That's a lot more work. So what's the solution? First, I recommend staying away from complex format files like PDF files. Stick with Markdown as much as you can. Markdown is essentially a text file with some hierarchical formatting like headlines and subheadlines. ChatGPT loves this hierarchical information. Text files are also good. If you upload external files, then make sure you tell ChatGPT that you've uploaded it so it can use it. The text you paste into the chat window seems to have the biggest impact. I pass into the chat window material that I want ChatGPT to work on directly. It seems to work better than referencing uploaded files, especially for providing instructions to follow or content to edit. The big challenge here is confirming that the large language model has access to all your information. I'm not convinced that ChatGPT ever does. It kind of messes up one of the major use cases for ChatGPT and one that I was depending on for a long time, where I upload a library of documents that ChatGPT can reference for specialized knowledge. Companies could upload operations manuals and have it do the first line of customer support, but none of this is working because 
it's not able to really reference these additional documents. In my case, I have literally millions of words in my library of writing, and I desperately need an editor. <laughs> Every writer needs an editor. And I've spent hundreds of hours teaching ChatGPT in my custom GPTs to act as my editor. It doesn't really work very well if you can't read my writing. And the AI will never admit that it can't do something. Never. And it will lie to you to save itself from being wrong, just like an immature human. So beware. You have to make it prove to you that it read the content. I ask it something like, what's the last sentence from each chapter? But mix up the questions so it can't predict what you'll ask the next time. <laughs> really? Okay, so this is a real problem, right? No, not really. It's just that the solution is a little bit more complex than, than is obvious. The solution involves some programming and using additional tools to manage data. So there's databases to do this. I know how to do this, I just don't have the time right now. So the project is on hold and it'll become a priority for me soon. And when it does, we'll probably build together something that will work. So I have a question for you. You can help me choose the future direction of this channel. I believe that a lot of these ideas from software development are really essential for both business and for building software and also for working with large language models. Would you rather see videos from me on software development and how to do it well, or would you rather see videos from me on large language models and using AI? I really wanna combine them both and work with AI to develop software, but so far I haven't really found the right way to do this, and so I'm still experimenting. I have found ways to write with AI, to brainstorm with AI, to do business planning with AI. And so I'm taking advantage of that. And I'm sharing a lot of these ideas in my book, which is going to be the second edition is coming out really soon in November of 2024. And this book not only is about prompt engineering, but it was written through prompting. The only text that I wrote in the book was the preface. The rest of the book was generated by AI, but it took hundreds, probably thousands of hours and pages and pages and pages of prompts to be able to get it to do what I wanted it to do. There was a lot of trial and error. It probably took equivalent amount of time to having to write it myself, maybe even more time, but it proves the thesis of the book, which is when you can write good prompts, you can get extraordinary results. If you found this video helpful, then let me know in the comments. If you have questions, then feel free to ask. I think we all have to understand the limits of large language models today and what to expect in the future. I think they have tremendous value for us, but they also have some kinks that they need to work out. So we call it the bleeding edge and it's the price we pay for being the first to learn new things. It's very exciting. And if you wanna check out some more videos, I have a whole playlist on developing software that's valuable to anyone who really wants to collaborate with AI and build software that's sustainable. Understanding what good code is, is really essential for being able to work with AI to build good code. <laughs> so, happy prompting and happy coding. Ciao.